QuickBooks Online 2024 Budgeted Balance Sheet Data Input. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to be on top with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a quick budgeted balance sheet disclaimer. It looks like at this time, QuickBooks Online does not have the capacity to run budgeted balance sheet reports. Let's go over a quick history of budgets from QuickBooks to get an idea of the progression over time. I believe that the desktop version of QuickBooks has had the capacity for some time to run budgets for both the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, as well as the balance sheet. However, QuickBooks Online has not had the capacity prior to recently to even do the data input for the budgeted balance sheet, only having the capacity for the budgeted income statement, otherwise known as the budgeted profit and loss reports. So recently, we now have this option to be able to do the data input for the budgeted balance sheet, but it doesn't look like we have the related reports that you would think would be generated from that data input, such as the budget overview for the balance sheet and the, and the budget versus actual for the balance sheet. Now, I would expect or I would think going forward that hopefully QuickBooks would be able to use that data input to then uh, create those reports, but I don't believe they are there as of the time of this recording. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left hand side and the favorites. We're going to be right clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab. Right clicking the profit and loss to open a link in a new tab. The same with the trusty TB trial balance. Let's go to the balance sheet. We're going to close that hamburger and then we'll change the range. 010124 tab, 022924 tab. Selecting the drop down so we can see this on a month by month, side by side. Run it. Tabbing to the right. Closing the hand boogie and we'll repeat the process. We're going from 010124 tab, 022924 tab. Dropping down so we can see the months running to refresh it. Uno vase mas one more time. Closing the hand boogie and changing the range. 010124 tab, 022924 tab. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, you know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com, selecting the drop-down for months and run. Okay, so in prior presentations, I'm going to go back to the profit and loss. We've been looking at our budgets, the primary budget typically being the profit and loss. That's the first one to come to mind because that is the performance uh, report, seeing how well we did, how far we went, how far can we run in an hour. Put the stopwatch on, the profit loss, that's the stopwatch. But we also now have the capacity in QuickBooks Online, which is a fairly recent occurrence, to be doing the balance sheet as well with some more advanced budgeting. So now we're over here on the balance sheet, and the balance sheet is where we stand at a point in time. So if we're trying to predict in the future, we're trying to say how far are we going to run, and then where will we be in our analogy? How far will we run next month, and then where will we be 
closer to the promised land, I hope, I hope of revenue by generating revenue, uh, or right, so that's where the balance sheet is after each of the months. So we exported the prior balance sheet and we did our analysis here to create a budgeted balance sheet. So now we have our budgeted balance sheet. We used kind of a, you know, a, a, one method you can kind of approach to get like a, a basic idea of a balance sheet because I think a lot of people probably aren't that good at really thinking through where they're going to be from a balance sheet perspective. And we have whole other courses on that if you want to take a look at that. It's not something that you typically would do on like the bookkeeping side of things. Although, of course, again, the format of the budget is in terms of financial accounting format, which I think accountants could have a much better feel for and create budgets and worksheets like this than someone who, who has just simply a, a finance background because you can start to work with worksheets like we did here using debits and credits, which is uh, cleaner uh, to, to make a cleaner worksheet typically. But in any case, now that we have that, we'll do what QuickBooks does well. We're gonna import this back into the QuickBooks so that we can then run uh, our financials, the, the major one being the major report being the budget versus actual, right? So we're gonna go back on over here and let's go into our budget drop down so we're in our uh, cog and then the budgets we already have one for the p l the profit and the loss we're going to create another budget uh, and so i'm going to create it and then down here we have the importing option so this time how do you want to set up your budget so select one this time it's going to be the p l the profit and loss budget for december that's what we want now we could do it on a monthly basis quarterly basis and yearly basis note that the budget for the balance sheet might be something that you don't do every month, right? We could, because we did it with a method we use, but we might say, hey, look, I'm just gonna do the balance sheet on a quarterly basis maybe, or maybe even on a yearly basis to get an idea of where we will be. But we did a monthly one here to go with our monthly P&L profit and loss. So let's go ahead and uh, import the budget. Let's try to import, before I import it, let's go to the next and you will see the data input screen that looks very similar to the one we had with the income statement. We have the drop down up top for the for the period. We have the balance uh, as of today, meaning it's giving us the current balance, which might be a starting point that we could use. Note that's different than the default starting point for the income statement. The default starting for the income statement being last year, right? What happened last year? In this case, it might be like the last day of last year, but we're looking at the last period in time. And that's probably our starting point because we're looking at a point in time report. We could also use the balance sheet as of the last month, last quarter uh, uh, balance as of the last year. The, the point is that we don't need a beginning date, right? We only need one point in time. That's gonna be our starting point. They also give us the nice little accounting equation, equation up top uh, assets equal liabilities uh, plus equity, that will help us to be in balance. Because remember, the beauty of QuickBooks uh, is that it forces us to use the double entry accounting system when we do data input, such as I'm tabbing to the right with these forms. These forms force us to do the double entry accounting system, forcing us to, to have an internal control, making it more likely we'll, we'll not make an error. Uh, so that's great, but you can't really do that when you're just doing data input of the balance sheet. So they're going to try to give you this little accounting equation to hopefully help you see that the assets should be equaling the liabilities and equity. That's what we did basically over here. So so now uh, let's actually close this out and then go into it again because I want to import the one. So I'm going to so do you want to leave without saving? I do. I do want to leave without saving QuickBooks. And then we're going to create a budget and this time let's import the budget and they're going to say, okay, this is the budget type we want. Uh, did I say it was about, no, this is a profit and loss. Let me close it again. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to say, create a budget. I want the balance sheet budget monthly. And then I want to import it, import it. And so then it says all your budgets in one place, budget type is a profit it says profit and loss again plan your budget profit and loss hold on it's not allowing me to change it to a balance sheet budget that's kind of annoying well let's just 
do the data input for the balance sheet then i'm going to say all right i won't import the budget let's just plug it in there so we're going to say create a budget and we're going to say it's a balance sheet budget and then i'm just going to say next and then we'll just put this in place so it'd be best if we have this kind of side by side would be the easiest thing to do i'm going to toggle this off and let's see if we could just crank this out so i'm gonna maybe i could put this off to the side a bit and like that and say okay so january through december so we've got the checking account well I'm, maybe i can hide some cells here i need to hide these right click and hide see if i can make this as easy as possible okay and then i'll make these colored as i go down and enter them i'll right click i'll uncolor them for now and then okay so we're on the checking account checking account is at uh, 96269 so january checking account uh uh 96269 and then see that is uh going up why does it give me a little error that's going up as we go so i'd have to go through each of these and say okay then it goes to uh 90,564 90564 da, 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 da. and i'm going to basically spare you the data input i'll put the rest in here and then we'll move to the next one okay so i think i put all those in these errors are telling me that we're basically out of balance is going to be the idea that do they give me a total down here at the bottom too uh so assets equal so it's going to tell me that i'm out of balance okay that's fine and then we'll say all right what's the next one we're going to say accounts receivable We'll do the same thing for the A to the R, accounts receivable starting in January. Then again, I'm just going to plug these in and they're going to change as we go. So let's do All right, so I've added those. And then we're going to go to the inventory, same thing. So where's inventory? So there's our inventory. Let's plug those in. All right, so that's done. So inventory and then... We don't have anything on these two. And then we've got the prepaid insurance. That's the same all the way across. So I'm gonna say, okay, prepaid expenses, prepaid insurance, I'm just gonna say is 11,000. And that one's actually easy. I can copy it across, which is nice, thankfully. And then furniture and equipment, I'm gonna do the same for these. So 98 and then the accumulated depreciation, these I can copy across. So I'm gonna say, okay, the equipment, the building, I don't have a building, furniture and fixture, I'm going to say is 98,000 and copy that across, boom. And then we're going to say that the accumulated depreciation for that will be, I think I have to put a negative 9834. That's how QuickBooks sees it, I believe. And we could check that. Yeah, you could see it here. Here's the subtotal. So I have to put it in there as a negative and then the land no long term the machinery so we're going to say machinery is on the books for 5000 copying it across and then it's related accumulated depreciation negative 138 that negative will often throw people off uh, because the contra asset is often if there's a problem people often have a problem with the contra asset so keep that and that's what accumulated depreciation is. And then the accounts payable is gonna change as we go. So we're going to the liabilities, accounts payable. I will plug those in. All right, I've plugged those in. And then we're gonna to go to the, all of the sales tax uh, accounts, which we have broken out into multiple areas. Actually, there's a visa that's, at, that's gonna go up. So I'll plug that in. Okay, I've plugged those in. So that's going to be the visa and then we have the sales tax so sales uh tax payable uh maybe i'll put this into just one account so that well i should probably break it out so i'll put these all these three or four sales tax lines in okay i've plugged those in and notice this one i had to plug in for negatives because that was our adjustment account so it's in there as a negative. So I plug these and then these are negative and positive. That's the opposite of what we have over here because the negatives represent credits to us and the positives then are 
these two are netting out against each other. So the balance is a credit balance or a, a normal balance of 578 for uh, the total payable. Okay, so then we have interest payable. So that's gonna go up as we go. All right, so here's interest payable. So let's do that one. I'll just plug that one in. And actually that one's not gonna go up as we go. So I can just say that's gonna be 73, copy it across, boom. So interest payable. And then these loans also are not gonna change as we go. So I'm gonna say these three loans, I'll just keep them or these loans, I'll keep them the same. The short-term portion of the loan. So I'm going to say we kept those the same. So 5,000. Copy that across. Roger that. Copy that. And then we're going to say 13109 and copy that across. Okay, so those are the two loans. And then we've got all of the, all of the, the tax stuff. This stuff also remaining the same because we're not going to change the number of employees so i'm going to say the pit payable 154 copied across and then the ett for uh come on it's frozen for 401 copied across and then the federal tax 4047 copied across futa is going to be 71 copied across and this was a payroll tax adjustment which has to be negative of 2596 and i'm going to copy that across okay then let's make that green then we've got unearned revenue which we said was going to go up as we go so i'll have to populate that all right i think i have that in there so there we have that one unearned revenue the loan, the long-term portion of the loan, I'm going to say that stays constant. So I'm going to say this was the Chase loan, had a long-term portion of 56770. Let's copy that across. So there's that one, and boom, no opening balance. The draws, I'm going to keep it the same. So we'll say the draws are 500. We're just going to copy that across probably should have increased that 500 per period or something but we'll say that's the same and then the investment from the owner is going to say 65,000 copy that across and then we've got the equity which I'll have to that's going to change so I'll have to populate that one all right so there's that one now it's saying I'm still out of balance here Okay, now QuickBook has its little system here for us to be able to see where we are out of balance. And this, this account accounting equation will change depending on the month that we're in. So if I'm over here uh, in January, then it's going to give me this accounting equation for January, February, it changes to February, and so on. I still don't think QuickBooks has the best system. I don't think they've worked out all the kinks to make the data input as easy as possible. One, because I don't think it was as easy for us to simply upload the Excel worksheet as it is for the profit and loss. And two, what I'd like to be able to do is run the actual report because I think that would be easier to look at than this data input screen. And I don't think it'll actually allow me to run the report until I get all these orange dots to be reconciled. So in other words, what I'd like to do is say, okay, I want to save it QuickBooks. And it says assets don't match with the sum of the liabilities and equity in the current view. Do you still want to continue? And I'd say save it. And then, and, and then I would like to close it. And basically within our reports here, I'd like to run the report. You'll notice I don't have the same options to run uh, the report at this point in time as I do with this one with the profit and loss. And I believe that's because we haven't rec we haven't put everything in balance. It would be a lot easier to look at it in a report format, possibly even being able to export it to Excel to figure out where the problem is, where the differences are. So that's one thing I wish, you know, they I think they could improve on that. But let's go back into here and say, okay, we have our balancing. Let's go into each of these months and say, all right, uh, assets. So if I look at my total assets on my worksheet, notice I have my, de my debits positives, my credits negative. So I can just highlight 
from here down to do, 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 do here, those are my assets and it should be at uh, 227822 and they're showing 224. So I should have 227822 minus what they have is 224822. So I'm off by uh, 3000. So if I look in, into each of these categories, I could say, okay, I'm off by 3000 on the assets. So cash uh, looks correct. I can't click on it. It'll, and then the, uh, the accounts receivable looks right. And then the inventory. So it looks like it's the inventory should be 4346. So let's change that to 4346 on the inventory. Go back on over to January. It says I'm still off by 1,000. Now I've checked this a couple times on uh, the liabilities. And it's, I, it seems like it's not picking up this credit card thousand dollars right there. Like if I delete that and then go back on over here, now it says uh, it's in balance, which seems strange to me. So, okay, the thing that's funny is this credit card is adjusting the equity portion of the accounting equation for some reason. So if I go, so like if I see assets, liabilities and equity and the liabilities are at 8266 and then i add 1000 on the credit card then the liabilities are still at 8266 even though i added a thousand on the credit card but if i but if i look over on the equity side of things it's currently at 146 757 and I remove this amount back to zero then that changes to 145 757 so something's funny has happened with this is with this credit card it's changing the equity field instead of the <laughs> instead of the liabilities which is kind of strange I'm just gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna make it be in balance here I don't want to play with it like forever so I'm gonna say like negative one just to put us in balance. So that month is in balance. And let's see if I could do a similar thing uh, to the rest here. So I'm gonna say, all right, the, February is out of balance. Okay, so February is out of balance. The assets should be doo -doo -doo, from here down to here, uh, 225, 225, 251. And I've got 225, 252 two. that's pretty close how much am i out of balance by it's basically looks like it's like that credit card thing again so this credit card is throwing us out of whack so let me go let me just i'm just gonna throw the plug in here because i don't want to play with it forever so i'm gonna say let's just if i remove the credit card in february boom then it's off by one one three so now I'm off by one, one, three. It's not, so it's not the assets. Well, let me just, I'm just going to put the plug in the credit card here because I don't, like I said, I don't want to do this forever. So negative one, one, three. And then that now is off by twice that much. Let's put a positive one, one, three. And then, okay, let's go to here. And we're saying that's still off by like that thousand dollars, which I don't, Again, it's the same. It's, I don't really understand that. Let's remove the credit card, and then we're gonna say it's two, two thirty-six. So I'm gonna put two thirty-six, and that will put us back in balance. This one's off by that same thousand dollars. So I'm gonna delete this, and try to put this in here at three sixty-nine. And so, this isn't the best. I know I feel like I'm kind of cheating here. I am cheating, <laughs> but let's just, I want to be able to process the report. So this is going to be 513. And so that puts us in balance here. And then here, I'm going to just say, D -d -d -d, it's still off by that thousand. I should, I feel like I should take more time to look at that, but I'm not going to, we're going to keep pushing forward here for the example problem that puts us in balance. So dit, dit. Let's go here. It's off by a thousand again. Let's delete it and then go back in here. 835 and then boom, boom. I'm going to do it again 
and then put in here the difference of 1016 and then boom boom and let's delete this and then I'll put the difference of 1211 and then and then take this out and I'll put the difference in here of 1424 and so now this one we'll take this off off by a thousand again that same thousand one six five five and then that's in balance and then finally let's do the same here and so we'll put this back in at one nine oh five so now i've got green check marks across the whole thing now what i'd like to do is if i want to drill down on this further i'd really like to be able to actually generate the report and then be able to drill down on it but it won't let me generate an actual report unless I get all the greens, all the green check marks. So maybe we'll go back into this later because we can always adjust it, but it won't let us actually process a report unless it has everything checked off. It's trying to force us to be in balance again, which is kind of a good thing, but I, I don't think that's the optimal way to do it because uh, it would be easier to look at the report to try to fix something. So let's save and close it now. And so now we have it, now we have it processed. Okay, so it looks like at this point in time, QuickBooks Online only has the actual reports for the budget reports, that being the budget versus actual and budget overview reports for the budgeted income statement or budgeted profit and loss report, and not for the budgeted balance sheet. I would assume going forward, QuickBooks would hopefully generate the ability to create reports for the balance sheet that is still fairly new for QuickBooks Online. The desktop version, I believe, has had the ability to make a budgeted balance sheet for some time, but the online version really only had the ability to make the budgeted profit and loss, and then they added this feature to be able to select the data input for the balance sheet. And again, I would assume that going forward, they will make an adjustment and add the reports that would be generated from the data input for the budgeted balance sheet.